Hi, welcome to ICA's online service. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today. Uh, before we get started, here's a few things you might want to know. We have ICA Children's Church material available for your kids. You can download it at bit.ly ICA Kids Online. We hope you and your child can have a great experience and encounter God together. Follow ICA Kids on Instagram to get the latest updates from ICA Kids. ICA's prayer service is going stronger on Zoom every Tuesday at 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. You can check our Instagram on Tuesday to get the meeting ID and let us be strengthened by praying together. We provide a new way for you to donate online to the ministry at ICA. You can scan the QR code on the screen or visit icasby.com giving for more information. Have you followed ICA on our social media or subscribed to ICA's YouTube channel? We've provided devotions, recipes, and more interesting content and updates to accompany you during the quarantine. Because physical distancing is not spiritual distancing. We would love to pray together with you. If you have a prayer request, you can submit it at bit.ly ICA Prayer Online or scan the QR code you see on your screen. Worship is about to begin. We pray that the presence of God will go beyond every screen. God bless you. Uh, before we worship, um, let's let's take a moment, let's pray, let's give our hearts to God, and to simply give thanks to Him. Lord, we come here, Lord, to worship You. We come here, Lord, to surrender ourselves to You, to lift up our voices and our hearts, Lord, because we know Your presence is here amongst us, not just not just behind the screen, Lord, but in every home, in every heart, across the city around the world you are still present Lord and in the midst of this storm we know Father that you are here in the midst of this storm Father you walk among us still and you touch us and you calm the storm Lord let us feel the presence of your power of your grace and feel the presence of heaven Lord surrounding us Touch us today, Lord, as we look to you. Because we believe, Lord, there is nothing that you cannot do, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Just one word. You come the storm that surrounds me. Just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see, my heart can help but believe. There's nothing that I got. It's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. Yes. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Oh, just one word. You hear what's broken inside. one word and you revive every dream just one touch I feel the power of heaven just one touch my eyes were open to see my heart can't help but believe there's nothing that our God can do that's not 
I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Church, sing it to the Lord. around us instead of the circumstances surrounding us Lord let us look to you look at your light and see the wonder of your beauty the wonder of your grace the wonder of your power the wonder father of all that you've done for us Lord in Jesus name The 
this song we sing to you, Lord. I see the world away. I'm not afraid to follow. I see the world away. I'm not ashamed to say so. I see the Jesus way. And I'm walking in the light. I see the world in life, I see the world in wonder, I see the world in life, person and living color, I see the world go away, and I'm walking in the light, oh, come on sing it now, I see the world in grace, I see the world in gospel, I see the world Kami bersyukur padamu Tuhan karena engkau yang memberikan kami kehidupan yang baru Di tengah-tengah padang gurun ini Tuhan Engkau memberikan kepada kami semua yang kami perlukan Engkau memberikan kami air kehidupan Nafas yang baru Dengan apa akan kami balas Tuhan semua yang telah engkau berikan Kami hanya bisa mengangkat pujian kami Tuhan. And let our incense rise to you Father right now. Our worship Lord, to glorify you. And we simply give thanks. Dan kami bersyukur kepadamu Tuhan. Haleluya. 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 Dengan apa kan ku Segala kebaikanmu Segenap hatiku Menyembahmu Yesus Ku bersyukur padamu Dengan apa kan ku balas Segala kebaikanmu Segenap hatiku menyembahmu Yesus Ku bersyukur padamu selamanya Kasihmu besar Tuhan 
Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this morning, God, for the opportunity you have given us, Father, to come together, Lord Jesus, with our brother and our sister, Lord, to worship the name that is higher above all names, Father. To be able to sit in your presence, despite of what's going on outside, Lord Jesus, things that we know are not certain, things that we know are not ideal, Father, but we would never take this for granted, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that the season of coronavirus, Lord Jesus, may it fan the fire inside of us, Lord Jesus. May it increase the thirst and hunger for more of you in our lives, Father. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that um, this whole situation, Lord Jesus, would bring us even closer to you, Lord. And this morning, God, as we are preparing our heart to listen to your word, Lord, we just would like to invite your Holy Spirit to come, God, and to help us see and understand things of heavens, Lord Jesus, because we understand without your spirit, Lord Jesus, we will be unable, Lord, to listen and to hear what you want us to hear, Father. So please be with us this morning, and as we listen to your word, Lord Jesus, may you come and may you convict us, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen, 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 amen. Good morning, ICA. Welcome back to our ICA online service. Um, my name is Fish. Um, my real name is Kevin, but I think most of you guys know me as Fish. I'm the youth pastor here of ICA Surabaya. And it's so good to be with all of you guys this morning. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are all staying healthy and are excited to listen to the Word of God this morning. Because I don't know about you, I am so pumped about today's Word, okay? This morning, we're going to continue on um, our sermon series on the book of Psalms, um, titled, a, a playlist for life. I still think that, you know, the idea that I gave Pastor Arthur and the gang to call this series um, awesome, get it? Awesome was a great idea, but you know what? Playlist for life is a great idea nonetheless, right? Um, it, last week we started on Psalm um, 73. If you have not seen it, I implore you, I encourage you to go and check it out. It's on this YouTube channel which is why you should also subscribe, okay? Um, you don't want to miss it. Pastor Arthur share a great, great message, and I think it'll bless you as much as it has blessed me, all right? Well, today I'll be speaking from um, my personal favorite psalm, all right? Um, um, and it is Psalm 23. And I think this is arguably one of the most well-loved and well-known psalm out there, you know. Um, this is your all-time classic psalm. This is the psalm that you use uh, whenever you want to post those Instagram selfies and want to make it, you know, a bit more spiritual. You post it, he lay me down in green pasture. This is the psalm. This is your classic psalm. This is your living on a prayer psalm. This is your um, dancing queen psalm, right? This is um, the psalm that everybody knows, and rightfully so. Psalm 23 to me is one of the most uplifting and encouraging psalms to read, um, especially so given the time that we're in at this very moment in this pandemic-ridden time where um, the feeling of fear is very apparent, um, where people are losing their jobs left and right, where some of us are dealing with the loss of the loved one, right? And while some are literally fighting for their life, it is a chaotic time, nothing is as normal, and everyone is feeling anxious. But, can I tell you something this morning? Psalm 23 um, was believed to be written by King David under the similar circumstances. You know, this very uplifting and encouraging psalm was written under similar circumstances that we're in right now. Well, there is yet uh, an exact answer of when um, did he write this psalm. Many scholars agree that this psalm was written around the time when King David was hiding at Mahanaim, 
right? This is a time when um, he was caught in a very dire situation where um, he was hiding from his own son. His own son was pursuing him. His own son was trying to kill him and he was hiding from his son. Can you guys imagine how he must have felt? How anxious he was or maybe how confused he was or was he heartbroken? Was he full of fear? I believe so. I believe King David, during the time when he wrote this uplifting psalm, was finding himself in a similar situation as we do at this very moment. And yet, in the middle of his darkest hours, he wrote this beautiful psalm that can still speak to us and encourage us today. I want to read it for you this morning. So if you have your Bible, you can turn your Bible to Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are clothed beside me, and your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. May God have his blessing to the word. What a beautiful psalm. It is so encouraging. It is so uplifting. There's that level of assurance every time we read that psalm about how good our God is to us, right? It is so hard to imagine that this amazing, uplifting, encouraging psalm was written in the situation that are similar to what we're currently facing. A situation where hope seemed lost, where people are anxious, where fear, and you can feel it in the air, right? But because of that, this morning, I would like to invite you guys to see what King David had learned throughout his life that allowed him to still have that perspective um, even during the hardest and the darkest time of his life. You know, a time when um, it is not an ideal situation for him, right? Time where he was under persecution. Time when he was afraid for his life. And hopefully, the things that um, he had learned can help us today. Are you guys ready for it? Well, the first lesson um, that we can learn from this passage is that King David knew that God is his good shepherd. I'm going to repeat it again. King David, he knew that God was his good shepherd. We can see this from the very first verse um, of this passage where he said, The Lord is my shepherd. The very first thing that he said, the Lord is my shepherd, which shows his understanding of who he was walking with. This understanding then leads him to have that confidence and the assurance to say even that um, even if he walks through the darkest of valley, which we know if you have read the story of King David, we know that he has gone through a lot of dark valleys, right? Some may include facing a giant, some may include moral failures and making mistakes. Some include persecution. He has been persecuted twice at this point. He has been persecuted by King Saul, and now he's been persecuted by his own son. David knows a lot about dark valley, right? But here he said that even if I have to walk to the darkest of valley, he will not be afraid. And it is not because um, he knows that he was a king, right? It's not even because of that. It's not because um, what he know he could do. It's not because of his strength or what he had. But it was because he knew his shepherd was always close to him. He knew and he understood that his good shepherd was always close to him. Now my question to you this morning. Do you guys know that? Do you guys know that your good shepherd is always with you. The good shepherd that cares for you. The good shepherd that knows you each by your name. 
the good shepherd that in Matthew 10.30, it says um, that he even know the numbers of your hair. Do you know that? Do you know that um, the good shepherd that provides for your needs is there with you? You know, the one that um, leads you to the green pasture, lay you next to the streams, right? Where you can get water and be refreshed or, or maybe through the blessing that he has given you in your lives. Do you know that that good shepherd is walking next to you? The good shepherd that protects and guides you with his rod and his staff. The good shepherd that, you know, loves you too much to leave you alone. Do you know him? Or even better question, do you still seek after him? Because I believe all of us here know that the good shepherd is there which is why we're still here on Sunday, but do you still seek after Him? Or have we become too busy relying on our own knowledge or what we have, right? To rely on the friends that we have, the, the, uh, the, the riches that we have accumulated, to look at our Good Shepherd. If so, if that's us right now, no wonder we are feeling lost and afraid. You know, because all of a sudden, the problem that we have in front of us is so much bigger than what we can normally handle. And by relying on our strength, you know, we're relying on a power that is just feeble. You know, it's power that is not even that much, right? Remember, there's only so much a sheep can do on its own. There's only so much a sheep can do on its own. And the same is for us without God. There's only so much we can do on our own power. David, throughout his life, never lost sight of his shepherd. And because of that, we can see how he managed to overcome all the challenges in his life. And even, you know, at the end of his life, even after all that he had gone through or the mistake that he had done, David was called the man after God's own heart. And I think that's the first thing that David had learned that can help us, that I wish all of us can learn. And I, again, I'm not saying it because I'm perfect. I'm the same. I'm on the same boat. We're still struggling doing the same thing, right? But this is what we can learn from King David on how he can manage to still hold on to that perspective even when time is not ideal for him that he understands that he's walking with the Good Shepherd. So to seek after God, chase after Him. Now the second lesson that we can learn from this passage is that God sometimes takes us through valley. God allows time in the valley and that is okay. We can see that there's a level of certain certainty David had uh, when he wrote that verse 4, right? Uh, maybe it is because um, he was older uh, when he wrote this, you know, speaking from his experience, right? But there's a level of certainty when he speaks of valleys in our lives. It doesn't matter who you are. There will always be time in your life where you would have to walk through the valley. All of us want to be on mountaintop. I think this is something that um, I don't even need to ask you guys. You guys want to be on mountaintop. And of course, um, if you haven't seen any mountaintop, maybe you should go and try go to Bromo. I remember um, my friend here, Alex and I, we went to Bromo to record uh, 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 the video for Race for the East, right? Race to the East, right? And when we were on that mountaintop of Bromo, we can see the view was amazing. The view was so pretty. We get to um, just sit down there enjoy and admire God's creation. Granted, it was a bit cold, but it was still awesome, right? And the same can be said when, you know, we make it to the top in life, right? When you are on the mountaintop of your life, maybe in your career, maybe in your relationship, when you get to that level of the mountaintop, you know, it feels so good. It feels really good to be able just to enjoy the blessing that God has given and to um, enjoy what God has allowed us to partake in. And it is um, so incredible that I would dare to say that nobody in their right mind would say no to it. Mountaintop experiences are great. 
Again, if you have never seen, maybe you should try to go to Bromo and see and to experience that yourself. But what we tend to forget about mountaintop experience is that in order for us to go to mountaintop, we often need to go past the valley. Only when we have gone past the valley, we can truly appreciate the mountaintop. In Bromo, before you get to that mountaintop, you need to ride the Jeep, and then the, that ride is not pleasant, right? It's bumpy, it's hard, it's cold, and usually before um, you go for the um, sunrise on the mountaintop, you have to wake up around three and make that um, journey, and it's not, it's not pleasant. But only because you have gone through those things, when you see that sunrise on that mountaintop, you can truly appreciate it. The same thing in our lives. I think those mountaintop experiences that you have, they are all amazing. But I do believe uh, only when you have gone past through the valley of life, you can truly appreciate those mountaintop moments. I believe they are very good reason why the good Lord allows us to be in the valley. And I want to make this clear because I do believe that God is the one that allows us to walk in valleys. I'm a firm believer that valleys are important for each one of us Christians, right? And the first reason why I think it is true and I think it's important because only when you go through the valley, you learn how to persevere. Going through the valley would teach you perseverance. Like it or not, right? This life would offer many challenges to you. And it will not get any easier, but you have and you will get stronger which is why you need to learn to persevere. And this is why, and I think this is the first reason why I believe that God often takes us to valley because He wants you to persevere. He wants you to not just lose out later when big challenges come, when the big, big um, battle of your faith comes. You know, He doesn't want you to, to just lose out. He wants you to be able to persevere through that, which is why He trains you through the valley. Now, the second reason... I believe valley helps shape our characters. I truly do believe that. The same way that valley teaches you perseverance and makes you stronger in your faith, I believe valleys help shape your character and faith. In 1 Peter um, 1, verse 7, it says, um, These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold through your faith, Though your faith is more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. I truly do believe one of the reasons why God often takes us to valley is because He wants our faith to grow. Our faith and our character, you know, they grow when we are put in the situation where we are forced to grow. And I think valley does that the best in our lives. You know, it's hard to grow when our life is comfortable. It's hard to grow when we got all that we need. But when we don't, but when times are hard, we often are forced to get out of the comfort zone and to grow. And I think this is the second reason why valleys are important. And this is why I believe the Lord often takes us through valley before each mountain tops. The third, and definitely not least, I believe that valleys are there to bring us closer to Him. That's right. Valleys are there to bring us closer to God. I want you to think about that. I want you to internalize that, right? When we are in valleys, when we no, we're not sure where we should go when we are at the end of ourselves, right? When we have failed to rely on our strength, right? We cannot do anything else. That's where we learn to truly seek after Him. This is what I truly do believe. The reasons why we have to go through the valley is because God wants you to seek after Him. Because when you are on your own and you have no more strength in you, that's when we go and seek after the Lord. And these are the reasons why I believe that we need to go through the valleys. 
This is why I believe that hard times are there because God has allowed it to happen. Not because He hates us, not because He doesn't love us, it's precisely because He loves us so very much to leave us just as we are. He wants us to become the people, the men and women that God has called us to become. And that's why we need to learn to embrace the valley. So the question this morning is, how then can we be more like King David in this crazy pandemic? The answer to that question is actually pretty simple. It's not easy, but it's simple, right? And it can be found in verse 6 where King David said, And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. If you know anything about King David, and as you learn about his life, you know that one thing that truly sets him apart from the rest is the fact that he was on constant pursuit of God. King David sought after God's heart his whole life. He wasn't the most talented, all right? He, or he was not the best looking person that God can use. If anything, if you learn the history or you read your Bible, you know that um, this was King Saul. He was the first person chosen to become the king of Israel because the people looked at him and said that he looks like head and shoulder in comparison to everybody else, right? He got the look, he got the charisma. He was talented as a king, right? But King David was not that person. He was not the first person chosen, right? So we know that he was not the most talented. Yes, he had talent, but he was not, not the most talented. He was not the best looking people. So that was not the reason why um, he was um, used so mightily by God, right? And he wasn't the wisest. I dare to say King David was not the wisest. He made significant mistakes um, in his life. He probably caused one of the biggest scandals in the whole Old Testament, right? And if anything, his son Solomon that came after him was considered to be the wisest man that have ever lived. He was not the wisest. He was not the best looking. He was not the most talented. But one thing that King David was, is that he was always on constant pursuit of God. David knew God. He understood God's heart which is why despite of what's happening around him, he was able to look beyond the challenges that life throws at him. He was able to look beyond the dire situation that he was trapped in and focus on his good shepherd. King David knew the heart of God. He knew God personally. He made that effort to always pursued after him, which is why he was able to stand strong even when he had to walk through the valley of darkness. How about us? Do we share the same thirst as King David? Are we constantly seeking after him? Does this pandemic, you know, has caused us to be even further from God? Or has it brought us ever closer to Him? And the reason why I say it, it is pretty simple to have the perspective that David had, right? Because I believe it only takes us that desire to want to pursue after Him. And I know, again, it's easier said than done. But this is what David did his whole life and this had enabled him to stand strong even when times are super hard for him and this morning I want to end it with a verse from Psalm 27 um, verse 4 right this is another one of the psalm that was written by King David and it says this Psalm 27 verse 4 the one thing I ask of the Lord the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfection and meditating in His temple. Why do you bow your heads down, close your eyes, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, um, for the opportunity that you've given us to be together this morning, Lord, to listen to your word this morning, Father. Lord, we are so thankful, Lord Jesus, for the reminder that you've given us, Lord, for each and every single one of us, Lord. 
to follow the example that King David had lived out for us. To share the same desire, Lord Jesus, as King David, Lord Jesus, so that when we have to walk to our valley of darkness, we'll be able to hold on to the perspective, Lord. We'll be able to focus solely on you, Jesus. Father, teach us to become people who have the strong desire and have the strong hunger and thirst for more of your presence. Teach us to become people that would constantly pursue after your heart, Father. Become people that is, you know what, we don't want anything else but the presence of the Lord. I pray that you spark that fire in us this morning. Because we understand, Lord Jesus, once we know, Lord, who our Good Shepherd is, Lord. And when we learn to see that He's always with us, fear would disappear. Hopelessness will disappear. Anxiety will disappear. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would lead us, God. Because we understand, Lord, without your calling, Lord, without you who first initiated this whole thing, God, we won't be able to reach out to you. Father. So we thank you for that. And as we close this service, Lord Jesus, uh, we want to speak blessing upon our congregations. And we say thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done to us, God. Friend, why do you lift up your hand and receive the benediction? I want to give you a benediction that comes from Hebrews 13, verse 20 to 21. Now may the God of peace who brought again from death, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, we hope to see you guys next week. Bye.
In the heart, in the heart.